So, what is tissue culture? Tissue culture or sterile culture is actually the in vitro method of cultivating cells, organs and tissues where it could be from an animal or a plant with a nutrient solution in stringent lab conditions and a glass container is typically used for this method. The attribute of this technique is that the living cells can be maintained for some time outside of the organism's body. And so, why do we need tissue culture? It enables us to raise new plants outside of the original host body. Furthermore, the artificial medium is frequently made up from the tips of shoots and roots, as well as the tiny portions of the seed, callus, ovule, cell. Here, we will discuss about the history of tissue culture. In 1832, Theodore Schwann had presented a crazy idea of growing cells outside of an original host body as long as the stringent external conditions are created. Three years later, Wilhelm Ruhe proved the theory in 1835 where he successfully performed the culture of embryonic chicken cells using salt solution as his medium. Another four years later, in 1839, Richinger had proposed the first parameter for this method. According to his experiment, tissue culture method is only successful if fragments had a minimum thickness of 1.5 mm and any less or thinner, the pigs will not be able to grow. For almost 50 years, no changes or new discoveries were made, but in 1885, a researcher had observed the growth of leukocyte cells from salamander in artificial environment, and in 1903, another researcher had done the same. Next, in 1907, the father of tissue culture was discovered. Ross Granville Harrison, an American zoologist, was able to culture the nerve cells from a frog in solidified limb. From this breakthrough, Harrison had earned the title of father of tissue culture ever since. Throughout the century, there were several other successful tissue culture processes and in 1929, the first successful organ culture was performed in England by a fellow named D.H. Fell. Moving on to the history of plant tissue culture, although tissue culture had been around since the beginning of 18th century, the development of plant tissue culture only began in 1898. Gottlieb Haberland, a German botanist, made the first attempt to use the in vitro method to grow plant tissues. The cells he used came from many parts and the palisade tissues came from the leaves, the pith, the epidermis and epidermal hairs. The initial experiments were rather successful, but the cells did not proliferate further. And by making use of subculturing, had maintained their cultured roots for the whole 20 weeks. Then in the 1930s, B vitamins and auxin or the IAA were recognized as key components in growing root cultures using the tissue culture method. Since then, the researchers began identifying the most important parameters that have now become our guides for tissue culturing today. Now, moving to the next part, growth regulators, auxin and cytokinin. Um, a nutrient medium containing sucrose in organic cells, vitamins, proteins, and growth regulators such as auxins and cytokinins are required for totipotency. Totipotency is defined as the ability of a single cell to divide and produce all the differentiated cells in an organism. Um, but now the question is why are plant growth regulators used in nutrient media for totipotency? Plant growth regulators are chemicals used to modify plant growth such as increasing branching, suppressing shoot growth, increasing return bloom, removing excess fruit and altering fruit maturity. The growth regulators play an important role in growth and differentiation of culture cells and tissues. Outsins, known as critical plant hormones, it can facilitate cell division and root differentiation. Um, Outsins also induce cell division, cell elongation, and formation of callus in cultures. Um, as for cytokinins, it is a plant specific chemical messenger also known as hormones. It act mainly to promote cell division, enlargement in young leaves, tissue differentiation, flowering, fruiting, and delay of aging in leaves. Okay, so now, mm, when several living cells are isolated from a living plant and then cultured in a medium containing both these cytokinin and the cell division will proceed and forming a mass of undifferentiated and produce both shoot and root. This then will uh, develop an entire new plant. 
The oxy will favor shoot and root, while the cytokinin favors the growth of the shoots. Next, what is the benefit of tissue culture? Tissue culturing is a quick procedure. A most quantity of plant tissue can create thousands of plantlets in a few weeks. Secondly, um, tissue culture can grow plants all year, regardless of the weather and season. Thirdly, it aids in the rapid introduction of novel kinds to the market. But after all, the most obvious advantage of the tissue culture technique is that it enables a student to study the structure and behavior of living cells with a position that is impossible in and by any other means. Now, I will continue the presentation with the materials needed for tissue culture. First, we will need culture vessels which include conical flask, petri dish and culture tubes. Next, we will need culture medium which can be murashige and scoop medium, gambord medium, white medium or niche medium. Thirdly, we will need sterilizing tools which are autoclave for the apparatus and sodium or calcium hypochlorite or we can use mercury chloride for the inoculates. Next, we need an incubator. These are the general techniques of plant tissue culture. First, we will excise a part of the plant which can be the leaf, the shoot or the root. Next, we will put it in a medium and allow it to multiply to form callus. Next, when the callus are formed, we will allow it to multiply into plantlets via morphogenesis. Next, when plantlets are formed, we will transfer it into a different container which has soil in it for the hardening process. In conclusion, we know that the plant tissue culture is a compilation of techniques that are used to grow plants, cells, organs and tissues under sterile conditions. In the future prospect, plant tissue culture has the potential to be used to determine diseases and stress resistance or other important traits on many plants. The use of tissue culture in determining of genotypes and their ancestors will be beneficial for other researchers to produce and verify the identity of the plants. There is no doubt that the application of plant biotechnology will emerge as the 21st century continues to unfold.